In the Queen's Silver Jubilee year of 1977, the status of one of Britain's remaining overseas possessions was suddenly under threat. It looked as though Argentina would make a move to invade the Falkland Islands, 8,000 miles or 12,000 kilometres from Britain, in 1977, five years before the actual Falklands War kicked off. The Labour Party government of Prime Minister James Callaghan faced this grave crisis that required prompt action to defuse. It was imperative that Britain persuaded Argentina not to invade, and that the best way was a show of force. The Argentines appeared serious in attempting to use force to capture the Falklands, which had been British islands since 1833. Though the islands themselves were sparsely populated by a hardy breed of Britons who reared sheep and fished its treacherous waters, the Falklands were the centrepiece of an important series of British territories in the South Atlantic. In 1977, the governor of the Falkland Islands also administered the largely uninhabited island of South Georgia, until a decade earlier an important whaling station, the South Sandwich Islands and British Antarctic Territory a 400,000 square mile slice of the Antarctic continent. All these areas sat on vast reserves of oil and natural gas. It's been estimated that the Falklands alone sits on 60 billion barrels worth of oil. The Argentines made the first move against British Antarctic possessions in November 1976, when a party of Argentine Air Force troops landed on the windswept island of Southern Thule, in the South Sandwich Islands. They boldly constructed a military base and a concrete helipad, a weather station and a radio station. A flagpole proudly flew the Argentine flag. The base was named Corbeta Uruguay. The British knew nothing of this invasion until December 1976. The question for Prime Minister Jim Callaghan was what sort of response should Britain make? and was Southern Thule only the beginning of a gradual takeover of the Falklands and its dependencies. The Royal Navy, in contrast to the government, was all for a show of force to deter Argentina. In late 1977, Callaghan, his government weak and unpopular, finally reacted, authorising Operation Journeyman, a small Royal Navy task force that was to be sent south to prevent further Argentine moves. Two frigates, the Type 21 HMS Alacrity and the Leander-class HMS Phoebe, were joined by these support ships RFA Resurgent and RFA Olwyn. The most powerful element in the little task force was HMS Dreadnought, Britain's first nuclear-powered submarine, who, incredibly, had been the first British submarine to surface at the North Pole in 1971. The British government was desperate to avoid a war with Argentina, and the task force, commanded by Captain Hugh Balfour, aboard Phoebe, was hamstrung by ridiculous rules of engagement, where he was told, on the one hand, to react to any aggression with tactful firmness, but to only use the minimum force to achieve the mission's aim. The captain of HMS Dreadnought was told that if he was attacked, he was to withdraw his submarine at high speed. The Argentine government became aware of the task force and made no further moves to invade the Falklands. Some have argued that if Margaret Thatcher's government had enacted its own Operation Journeyman in 1981 or early 1982, she might have convinced the Argentines not to invade. So in this regard, Callaghan's action appeared wise. But he refused to take military action against the Argentine military base on southern Thule leaving Argentine commandos in place and the Argentine flag flying over British sovereign territory. In fact, Argentina would remain in possession of southern Thule until after the Falklands War, six days after the Argentine surrender on the Falklands. On the 20th of June 1982, the British initiated Operation Keyhole to capture the Argentine base. A small task group sailed from the Falklands to southern Thule. It consisted of the frigate HMS Yarmouth, the ice patrol ship HMS Endurance, the support ship RFA Olmeda, and the tug Salvageman. 
Royal Marines, a 4-2 commando, went ashore to covertly observe the Argentine garrison. Conditions were atrocious, with gale-force winds and freezing temperatures. HMS Yarmouth then gave the Argentines a display of naval gunfire. The Argentines promptly surrendered without firing a shot. Interestingly, it was Lieutenant Keith Mills' party of 22 Royal Marines who had made a valiant last stand on South Georgia against the Argentine invasion on the 3rd of April 1982 who raised the Union Jack on Southern Thule. The British captured nine Argentine army personnel and one civilian. The Corbeta Uruguay base was sealed up and the British left. However, it wasn't quite the end of the story. In December 1982, the Royal Navy Ocean Research Ship HMS Hecate paid a visit to Southern Thule. It discovered that the Argentines had been back. The Argentine flag flew once more over the base. In February 1983, the crews of the frigate HMS Ariadne and the supply ship RFA Tidespring demolished the base. Leaving only the flagpole flying the Union Jack, two weather beacons and a fully provisioned hut for emergencies. It was the very last military action of the Falklands conflict. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.